Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm gonna make another requested prop. It's Loki's helmet from Thor Ragnarok, because out of all the helmets we've seen, this one's my favorite. Instead of the foil and duct tape patterns I typically do, I thought I'd just make this pattern directly on poster board. Since there's no top to the helmet, it's basically a cylinder anyway. I start by making one cheek guard. I measure the sizes of the helmet in the picture and then measure where they should be on my head and get a ratio to multiply all the measurements from the photo to what I need to make a pattern. After I have one cheek guard pattern, I measure my face and adjust the placement of the second cheek guard and then add a headband to fit. I tape the paper pattern to my head cast and start drawing the band for the back of my head the same way, getting one side made and making adjustments so it can fit my head, then measuring how big it needs to be and making a full size pattern. I'm gonna make my helmet from styrene plastic. It's available in sheets from plastic distributors and I can get a lot more sheet styrene for the same price as a good sized piece of Orbola. Orbola or thermoplastic is really nice and it's easy to work with but I'm used to working with styrene, and so that's what I'm gonna use. There we go. I cut the face part from 1 8 inch or three millimeter sheet styrene. This plastic can be thermoformed like Warble Up, but you need a higher heat. So I use my heat gun to shape the face plate to fit. Now, side note, styrene is often used for vacuum forming, and most model kits are made from styrene plastic. The cheek guards look like they have layer details that disappear behind that back band. I cut out the layer pieces from some 1 16th inch or 1.5 millimeter styrene and carefully carve some panel lines into them. Now, this is not hard to do, but go slowly and be careful not to cut all the way through. And a Dremel is quicker, but it's not really easier. The rotating bit of the Dremel makes it hard to keep a straight line and the hand cut line actually looks better. I glue the finished layers onto the faceplate using Weld On 4 plastic cement. I have actually had this stuff for years. There are more layer details on the back band, and I measure and make a pattern for all of these pieces too. The bottommost panel I cut from the thicker stuff, and the other two is the thinner. I can put each side on independently, leaving a seam in the back as it's covered by a hexagon that goes back there anyway. I scrape the corner off the edges where the two thinner panels will fit together. This will make that panel line more pronounced, and it will not look like a bad seam line. I attach the top layer, gluing the edges to be even, and trimming where they meet at the back so it's only one layer thick. The middle panel ended up being too big to fit, so I turned the bottom off to make it fit and then glue them in as well. With all the panels glued on, I sand down most of the edges, rounding them off so they look finished and don't just look like a bunch of cut plastic. I also sand down the corner where the thicker plastic meets the thinner layer, and I sand down any scratches and the glue drips. For the hexagon shape that goes in the back, I make a paper pattern, folding the pattern to cut it out so each side is symmetrical. I cut it from three millimeter styrene and make a panel to go on top. Now, this panel I just kind of guessed on because you'd never see the back in the movie. In fact, Loki wears this helmet longer in the trailer than he does in the final movie. Adding layers to the back band makes it stiffer, which is good, but I will need spring clamps to hold it in place while the cement sets. My plan is to glue it in stages, because I don't want to just pour on so much cement that it runs down the cheeks. As the head sets up, I start to plan the horns. I don't want to sculpt them out just to pull a pattern off of them, so I just cut out poster board and figure out the shapes that I need. Now I have a printout of the same picture that I was using before, and I scaled the horns to be the size that I want them to be. Now I can make each pattern piece, and I can check the size of it and see if I'm getting close to the shape that I want. This takes a few tries to get it, four times actually, with the last one just adding a little more curl to the end. I like to flex the thinner metal rulers that I have in order to make good curves, but this last curve was just so much curl, when I was done, I had to flatten the poor ruler back out. The next half I made the same way, but now I can measure the inside curve of the first piece and I can get this pattern made in just two tries. By taping the paper parts together, I can see if they'll fit the curve that I want, and I can add notches to help with aligning the foam parts. I label the edges A, B, and C, because it's easy to mix them up when there's a lot of pieces. Now the horns are just these two pieces, doubled for each one. I trace the patterns onto some five millimeter craft foam. I want it thick enough that they won't wobble. 
I cut out the smaller parts and make sure that the A edge is cut on a 45 degree angle because I want that edge to be a sharp point. All the other edges on both pieces I cut out on a 90 degree angle. With all eight pieces cut, and there are two sets of left and right parts, I heat the foam with my heat gun and curve it over a planish that I have made from a plastic punch ladle. By curving the foam now, it'll be easier to glue together and I'll have a much nicer shape. I start by gluing the B seams together using contact cement. I glue the small piece inside the edge of the larger piece to get the 90 degree corner. I probably should have cut these edges at a 45 degree angle too because it would have been cleaner and the horns would have been a centimeter thinner. Then I glue each C seam together. These are glued edge to edge and I pay close attention to my guide marks because if the marks don't match when I'm gluing it, the horns will be crooked. Finally, I glue together the A seam, finishing the horns. And I can't just glue them on. The even ends makes the horns stick out to the side. So I carefully cut off a wedge from the end and use the drop piece to make a match for the other side. Now the horns can kind of stick up and out to the front like they're supposed to. So what I really want to do is keep the foam pieces separate from the plastic pieces. It'll be easier to paint. All the plastic can just be spray painted, whereas the foam will need to be plastic dipped and spray painted. Plus, if they come off, it might be easier to ship them and move them around. I'm going to use magnets to hold the horns on. I have enough for two sets for each horn. I need inserts for the magnets to sit in. I trace the edge of a horn and then use a piece of scrap to reduce the size of the drawing and I'll get a pattern to make the inserts that I need. I also mark where I want the magnets to go so they'll all line up when I'm finished. I cut four inserts from the thicker styrene because it's close to the same size as the magnets. And I carve out the holes for them. I want to say that doing this does break the very tip of the blade off. So use an older blade if you want to do this. That's a way that you can just use an X-Acto knife to drill out a hole in a piece of plastic, and it's not that hard to do. I'm gonna use a drill in the rest because it's a lot faster. I sand the plastic so all the cut edges are flat, and then I cut out two more from some 10 millimeter EVA floor mat foam. I glue one set of the plastic parts to the foam. These are what will go into the horns. And then I glue magnets into the holes. Then I use contact cement to cover the holes with poster board, sealing in the magnets. I mark the remaining magnets so I know that they will attract to each other and just glue them to the paper and plastic. I trace where I want the horns to go. I look at the top edge and keep it flat with one side of the horns. That way, they will curl the same way and not be crooked. The panels I made are flat, so I need to add shims of plastic behind them to glue each to the forehead of the helmet. Now, in hindsight, curving all of these panels to fit the forehead probably would have been a better idea. Once the plastic is glued to the helmet, I place the foam inserts and then fit the horns over them. Then I can use super glue on the 10 millimeter foam inside of each horn. The last part I need is a triangle that goes on the forehead and it's not flat, it's raised off the helmet. So I cut a shape that is very close to what I need from floor mat foam and glue that to the helmet. Then I slowly cut panels of the thin styrene to cover over the foam and make sure that all the edges are smooth, flat, and clean. There are lots of small parts to cut and fit, and when I'm done, I file and sand all the edges to finish this part off. All right. <laughs> Just gonna need a foam insert to sit my head right. I suppose I need to paint it. It's perfect. I spray gray primer on the plastic and use gray plastic dip on the horns. Plastic dip is a great primer for foam and without it, spray paint does not stick very well. Then everything gets covered in two or three coats of gold spray paint. And I'm almost done painting it. Now, there's a little bit of green to put on this. I got some emerald to put on the sides here and over here. And I bought some model paint to do that. Only the one place on the side of the head and that front triangle has this metallic green trim. And this model paint's kind of thick, and I put it on as best as I could. Nail polish might actually work better. I cut an angle into the puzzle edge piece from some of the floor mats to make a wedge shape and test fit it inside the helmet. And I'm glad I did. It sits a lot higher than I thought it would. I mark where I want to glue the foam and then use contacts of it to glue it all in.
All the parts that I used to make this project, I picked up locally, and I put a part list in the description. If you haven't already, please subscribe and click that notification bell. <laughs> now, in the movie, Loki cosplayed as Odin for a while, right? So it's okay if Odin wears Loki's helmet. Now, one thing I was thinking about, if I was to make another one of these helmets, which I'm not planning on it, I would actually add a third set of magnets, one more in each horn. That way there's three sets of magnets for each horn, just for the peace of mind of wearing this around at a con and knowing that the horns really aren't gonna go anywhere. Two was plenty strong enough. I'm not having a problem with this, but three would just be that much better. Or glue them on permanently. Magnets make it easy, you can take it apart if you wanted to actually ship it or store it and not damage the horns. I had made the helmet itself out of styrene because I was concerned about making it out of foam that it wouldn't be strong enough to hold the horns, that the weight of the horns would deform the forehead. I'm actually thinking that probably wouldn't happen. Not with a couple of layers of foam anyway. Why don't one of you go ahead and put that together? Go ahead and make a foam one, send a picture in, we'll share it with everyone else and show that the foam one probably would hold just fine without having to have the styrene base. But I wanted to make one out of styrene because whether you make a helmet from styrene, totally from foam or fiberglass like they did in the movie, there's gonna be lots of different ways that you can make something. But this is how Odin makes. I want to say thank you to all of my Patreon subscribers, and if you want to jump in and help support new videos, please check out my Patreon page. If you have any ideas for something for me to make, please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. This is a tank game! We're gonna drive over shit and blow shit up, and look at this guy in the graphic over here, he looks just like Steeler from G.I. Joe, but he's not, because he's a little bit different.